A cluster randomised trial is a trial in which we randomise groups or clusters of individuals rather than the individuals themselves. So these groups or clusters that we randomise are usually pre-existing groups. So they could be, for example, patients within a hospital or a clinic, or they can be schools or geographical areas or towns. Um, so we could randomise any of those entities and that would be uh, a cluster randomised trial. In, in um, health services research, by far the, the, the most the commonest reason for doing a cluster randomised trial is because you have an intervention which is actually aimed at the cluster. So this might, for example, be reorganisation of services or it might be um, education for the health professionals who are part of the cluster um, and other sorts of interventions where it's primarily aimed at the cluster. You might have other bits of the intervention which are aimed at the individual, but, the, but most of the intervention is actually aimed at the cluster and it's therefore very, very difficult to do the intervention, to do the trial in any other way than to cluster randomise it. But um, there are a few other reasons why you might do a cluster randomised trial and people often talk about um, contamination as one of those reasons. That's uh, important if you've got, say, an infectious disease trial, where if you have individuals um, who are randomised to intervention and control and they uh, mix with each other, then if you give an intervention which is preventing the infectious disease to the intervention group and they mix with the control group, then they some of that preventive effects might naturally rub off onto the control group. So you want to separate those who get the intervention and the control somehow, and the easiest way to do that is to do cluster randomization. So that's another um, situation where they use. In, in other situations, it might be um, logistically or ethically uh, difficult to, ra to randomise individuals. And so for, there's one example of a trial that was done in Zimbabwe and it was on antenatal care. And what they wanted to do was to um, give those in the intervention group 12 sessions of antenatal care. And in the control group, they were only getting six sessions of antenatal care. And after discussion, it seemed that it was going to be very, very difficult to try and offer both of those types of, of system within one clinic. So they, they randomised, um, they cluster randomised that study rather than randomising individuals. So that, that's the, the, the sort of um, range of instances where you might do a cluster randomised trial. However, I would say that, that the, the sort of important features of a cluster randomised trial is that by cluster randomising, you make your trial larger. You need a larger sample size. And also you add complexity so everything becomes more complex in a cluster randomised trial and you can introduce um, particular sources of bias which are particular to these trials and don't occur in other trials. So my advice would be if you can um, do another design, an individually randomised trial rather than a cluster randomised trial, then do that. Only do a cluster randomised trial if you really, really need to.